Hey there YouTube fam, 93 Films here, and for today's video, I'm only going to talk about all the sections in the positions part of the event pan and crop, and not the masking portion, just because it will be too much information for some people, all in one sitting. So what I will do is do a separate video on the masking later on. Let's get started, shall we? Okay guys, before we start, make sure you have your sync cursor on, and I will explain why in a little bit. So I'm going to break this video into four sections and I will leave the time where I'm talking about a certain section in the description down below. That way you can skip through the video and only watch the sections you need to know or came here for. Section 1. This is where most of your editing is going to happen. Anything you do here will be reflected on your video preview in Sony Vegas. That is if you remember to turn on your sync cursor. The rectangle shaped window is exactly like your video preview. So I want you to pretend that this is like a camera or camcorder lens. Everything you see is what the people are going to see. Moving on, let's scroll all the way out. You could do this with your mouse scroller button or use a magnifying glass, which I'll show you later on. Now I'm going to drag the camera lens corner all the way out to show you how far you can make the video or picture look like. Instead of dragging the lens all the way back to normal, you can just right click and hit restore. Which brings me to what I wanted to show you guys next. You have 6 right click options. You already saw what the restore option did, so let me show you what the center does. Basically, it will always put the image inside the middle of the lens window. Flip horizontal will just mirror the image, left or right. Flip vertically will mirror up and down. The match output aspect will depend on your setting you currently have in your project property setting. Mine is currently at 1920 by 1080. So for example, take a look at this random picture I took on my phone, Berkeley. Notice how much empty space this picture will have in my video preview. If I click the match output aspect, it will automatically zoom in to match the current settings I have. But if I click on the match source aspect, it will go by the video or picture default aspect. And the last two things I want to show you guys for section one is you can spin the lens 360 degrees. And also do you see the little dots in the workspace background? Think of that as a ruler when you're editing things out. And I'll explain more in section three. Section 2. Okay, so let's click on the down arrow tab in the preset bar. And notice in here are some more aspect ratio for you guys. But I mostly use this tab to access my own save presets. So remember in section 1 when I zoomed all the way out? Well, I saved that work I did before with the save preset button. So let's go back to default. And then do some random work on this picture inside the workspace. Let's save this and then we can access it anytime we want. And if you want to delete any presets, just hit the delete preset button next to the save button. Next, we got the plugin chain, which is pretty much all the video event FX you can apply to the picture or video clip you're currently working on. But we'll discuss the video FX on another video. Section three. Okay, starting off with the show properties, you don't really want to mess with this too much unless you're trying to get a precise position for a keyframe. But I'll quickly go over it. The positions tab is just showing you the exact coordinates of your lens inside the workspace. If I drag the left or right side, the width and X center will be affected. And if I drag the top or bottom side, the height and the Y center will be affected. The rotation tab is affecting the circle around the lens inside the workspace, similar to the position tab. The keyframe interpolation I'll talk about once I get to section 4. The source tab is all about the video or picture you're currently working on. By changing the maintain aspect to no, the lens won't try to keep the picture or video the same aspect as your current settings that you have for your project. Having stretch to fill frame off will leave your picture or video clip at the same aspect from your settings, but you can move the lens around still. 
And finally, the workspace tab is all about the camera angles around the lens. Except grid spacing is the mini dots you see around the workspace. Okay, so moving on next, the normal edit tool is the mouse that lets you maneuver around the pan and crop and edit. The zoom edit tool lets you zoom in with the left click and zoom out with the right click. Enable snapping. Remember these little dots in the background? Well, with enable snapping, your edits will stop in each row for left and right and each column for top to bottom, almost like a ruler. You can add more dots in the grid spacing of your workspace tab. And if you left click your picture or video you're working on, then you can control the image with your arrow keys of your keyboard. Log aspect ratio. So this will go along with your project settings, similar to maintain aspect in the source tab. So if we turn both off, notice that the picture will not try to keep those video aspects. And if we enable log aspect ratio, it will go back to the video project settings. Size around center. No matter what angle I try to stretch the picture inside the workspace, it will always stay in the center. Move freely. The move freely function lets you move the image in any angle you want. But if you click on it again, notice how it changed to move in X only, meaning now I can only move the picture left to right and not up and down. And if you click on it again, move in Y only will show up. So now I am only allowed to move up and down. Section 4. Finally, we reach section 4, which has to do with this mini timeline for your own keyframes. Each second in the timeline is one frame. And anything you do inside the workspace will give you one keyframe. Now, remember when I told you to make sure you have your sync cursor on? Well, anything you do inside the workspace will appear in the preview window. So if we turn off the sync cursor and click on a different part of the main timeline, then head back to the image we were working on in that event pan and crop. Notice how no matter where I click on this timeline, it won't appear in the preview window. Okay, back to the keyframes. You can move back and forth each keyframe you have with these four buttons. I don't really use the create keyframe because moving the lens inside a workspace will automatically create one. And you can delete any keyframe with the delete keyframe button. Lastly, if you right click a keyframe, you can affect how the keyframes will be received in the preview window. So let's delete all the keyframes so I can show you what I mean. Let's now create a couple keyframes and have them do the same thing over and over. After that, let's add some effects to them and see the transitions for each one. Now taking everything that we learned, I'll show you some examples on what you could do. So for our first example, it's something I worked on quickly for the video. Essentially, it's a loop, but I wanted to show you guys how you can reshape a picture or video into another clip. Almost similar to this. How I placed the same video behind the film reel, but for this I needed a solid background and a transparent picture. And for my second and last example, all I did was evenly place two pictures on top of each other and reflected the other side. You can actually create like the Brady Bunch technique on a video if you want with this. Well, that's it for this tutorial video. If it helped you in any way, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe for more future videos. This is 93 Films here, signing out.